Hey, what's up guys? Rhino here, and I'm going to be, be bringing you my first podcast type video. This isn't the actual podcast that I'm going to be doing. This is just the type of video that I'm going to run so I can see how well it works out and I can talk about something in a way that's not a vlog. So I was watching a debate on YouTube. Um, does God exist? Pretty simple. Atheist versus theist. There were some doctors involved and it was like a three versus three debate where they took turns and they each had time to um, respond to each other. And the debate, you know, went pretty well. Obviously, I'm biased, but I would definitely say that the atheists won uh, the, the debate just simply because of the arguments put forward and the responses um, given by the, the theists weren't, um, weren't substantial. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Nothing said in the debate. I was actually going through the comments, and uh, one of these comments caught my attention, and it... It really, I mean, this is the typical Christian statement. Not typical Christian statement. Sorry, that's a horrible way to put it. This is the typical extreme radical Christian statement uh, of ignorance. This is a full comment. It's a really long comment, so it'll take me a while to get through. But I am reading it word for word. And it's uh, it's something that I feel like I should respond to in uh, in a lot of different ways. So. There was a time where, as a Christian woman, I would try my best to share my experiences and my knowledge on a personal level, as well as my own walk in life with Jesus. With anyone who commented that there either was no God or that God is some vile, mean being from the Old Testament who doesn't care for human beings, etc., etc. However, nowadays, I truly do not waste a single second of my life trying desperately to convince non-believers about why they should believe in Christ and or what it means when Jesus himself says no one comes to the Father except through me. Why? Because the majority of atheists I've come across are not and will never be even remotely open to the mere possibility that Jesus is their savior and that this earthly life is not actually the life that matters most, but rather a simply a test run for our place in the afterlife with Christ. Therefore, to share about Jesus is one thing, but really taking the time needed to convince a non-believing person, especially one who enjoys making a mockery of any deity religion belief system, outside the realms of science, is often a total waste of time. Because to actually come to know Jesus Christ outside the words written in the Bible, one must first truly be open to actually experiencing him, as opposed to seeing him. They are two very different things, the latter if which takes a genuine commitment. In this way, a Christian to prove that Jesus is God, outside of the fact that Jesus himself claimed this fact in the Bible, saying, those that have seen me have seen the Father, is like telling someone that if they love someone something, then they need to prove that love by allowing us to meet love. One experiences love and its fruits, as opposed to having its very existence proven to a person. This is the closest analogy I can give to knowing and experiencing the Lord Jesus Christ. He is more than a mere man, he is an essence. He is love itself, and he is a gentleman who waits to be invited into one's life rather than forcing his way in. Free will, our greatest gift. Ironically, it's for this reason that I realize that even remotely attempt to even a remotely attempt to prove or even explain why how Jesus God exists to an atheist is a pointless feat, because the atheist must first genuinely be open to inviting Jesus into their hearts, minds, and their lives. And, let's face it, most atheists would not genuinely be open to such an inv invitation and therefore will probably never truly know Jesus, the one and only God who created them, and the only one who can eternally save them. Sad really, but true. Now, this comment is obviously laden with fallacies as well as um, a lot of other problems, but I'm going to try to respond to as many as I can that I know know about um, you know, in, in my own opinion. These are opinionated responses. These are not um, necessarily factual responses. You can, you know, look them up, but this is how I would personally debunk it. Um, to start it off, uh, in the first paragraph where she talks about that she used to share her experience and her knowledge of, on a personal level, um, let me start off by saying she quotes share my experiences, but what you mean is proselytizing. You would shove your beliefs down someone's throat, especially when you say, um, when people commented that there was no God or that God is some vile, mean being from the Old Testament who doesn't care for human beings. You are showing that you were proselytizing, which is not sharing your experiences, 
it's forcing your beliefs down someone's throat and expecting them to follow those beliefs as if they are true and if they are um, factual, 100% non-disputable evidence. In the second paragraph, she talks about how it would be a waste of time to um, try to, or how it is a waste of time to try to convince atheists that uh, God exists. Um, the biggest part, the biggest problem I have with this paragraph is when she says, because the majority of atheists I've come across are not and will never be even remotely open to the mere possibility that Jesus is their savior. That is blatantly incorrect and an incredible straw man. Atheists are incredibly open to the idea. A lot of atheists are. I can't speak for all atheists. But most atheists that I know and that I've heard are very open to the idea. Me, personally, I'm an atheist, but I want to believe. Now, I don't want to believe in this uh, literal interpretation of the Bible because that would be scary as shit and this world would be all hell and um, it would be awful. But I want to believe there is a God out there. But I don't because there is no evidence for one. Most atheists are open to the idea that a God exists. They don't deny that. They don't. Most atheists don't say there are no gods. They simply state it is illogical to believe in a, in a God, especially specifically the Christian God, as stated here. So already you open with a, a an incorrect statement. But it also shows that the reason why you state this is not because the atheists are not open to the belief, but the fact that the evidence you proposed or the reasons that you proposed for believing in these comments that you supposedly responded to clearly was not enough for the atheist to believe. All atheists need is solid, falsifiable, empirical evidence to believe, which has never been provided. If you provide that, you'll have satisfied your burden of proof, and a lot of atheists would believe. That's all you need to do. So this is just simply showing that you are unable to satis satisfy your burden of proof in your responses to the uh, atheist arguments. <coughs> you also make a... Uh, What's the, well, I can't think of a, a good word. You make one hell of an assumption here in the second paragraph that Jesus is our Savior. Like, it is 100% factual. Uh, it is 100% factual evidence, or 100% factual, sorry. That was a horrible way of putting it. Uh, it is 100% factual that Jesus is our Savior. Yet you provide no evidence for what you're saying. You should simply state your beliefs and that atheists don't follow your beliefs, and that would be a true statement. You wouldn't be jumping to some conclusion, especially such a bold conclusion as this, and making yourself look eh, like a typical Christian commenter on YouTube who makes a bold claim like this without any supporting evidence whatsoever. So, the third paragraph. Therefore, to share Jesus is one thing, but really taking the time needed to convince a non-believing person um, especially one who enjoys making mockery of any deity, religion, belief system outside of the realms of science is often a total waste of time. Um, well, to start it off, people make a mockery of your religion because of the lack of proof and the absurdity, absurdity with a lot of the beliefs and um, things related to religion. I mean, just simply wa reading when an atheist comments and then a Christian responds, it makes me laugh. You mock yourselves, basically, with these these comments that you make. Atheists are asking for one simple thing, solid, falsifiable, empirical evidence, which I've already stated. If you post anything other than that, we will mock you because you are not posting real evidence. You are not able to satisfy your burden of proof, so you are blindly following your faith. Satisfy your burden of proof, and we will gladly listen to you. We won't mock you if you do what we ask. We ask for one simple, simple thing. The reason why I believe, or not believe, but accept evolution as a fact is because there is fa falsifiable empirical evidence for evolution. The reason why I accept gravity as a fact is because there is falsifiable empirical evidence for uh, gravity. That is why I accept those. So in order for us to accept your worldview, you must provide falsifiable empirical true evidence. You have yet to do so. Uh, then you go on to um, state, beca because to actually come to know Jesus Christ outside of the words written in the Bible 
one must first truly be open to actually experiencing him as opposed to seeing him. Those are two very different things. The latter it takes a genuine commitment. I agree with you here. Experiencing him and seeing him are two very different things because experiencing, experiencing him doesn't necessarily mean he's there. Kind of a, 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 an example of this is there are ways you can experience a high. Like if you take a drug, a specific drug, you can experience a high. However, you, there are alternative ways to experience that same high without taking any sort of drug. So you could take, a, you could do whatever method is outside of that to experience that high. That doesn't mean you actually are experiencing that drug. You're just experiencing the high produced by that drug. You can, your brain is very capable of doing many amazing things. And it's, it, it is truly astonishing what the human mind is capable of. One is believing and experiencing and seeing and hearing God, even though he isn't truly there. Your brain makes you feel and think that you are experiencing this omnipotent deity, even though you never have. You, don't, you aren't truly experiencing that. A good example of this is the placebo effect. Y uh, in case you don't know what pl placebo is, placebo is, I'll go over a quick example. Doctors will run a medical uh, test of a medicine. They will provide um, X amount of people, let's just say six people just to keep the numbers small. They will get six people who have some sort of disease, sickness, or problem that they're trying to fix with the medicine. Then they will um, give They'll split the people in half, three and three. They'll give three people the actual medicine, and then they'll give three people the placebo. The It's basically just sugar pills. But they'll be told that they were given the medicine. What's ironic is a lot of the time, it, depending upon what the sickness or ailment is, the people who are given the sugar pills will still get better in some way, even because they're simply told that this medicine that they're taking will help them, even though they're just taking a sugar pill that doesn't do anything except for maybe give them a sugar high or sugar rush or some shit. I don't know. The same thing happens with religion. You were born and raised being told that you believe or that God exists and that you will experience him, you'll feel him, he'll be everywhere, he'll be inside of you, he's amazing. And you're born and raised being told this, and therefore, because of the placebo, you think you feel him, even though you really don't. It's pure indoctrination, to be completely honest. So yes, I agree that you must be open to actually experiencing him as opposed to seeing him. However, that is not proof just because you experience him that he exists, because you can experience many things without actually ex without it actually being there. Um, another another good example of the placebo uh, on from the opposite side is. Um, when people are told that there is this disease running rampant um, in their area and these are the symptoms to look out for, oftentimes people will start to feel those symptoms without having the actual disease because they they think they have the disease, they're worried about having the disease, and therefore they just picture themselves having these symptoms and then they get these symptoms even though they don't actually have the disease. This has happened many times and it's just a placebo. It You think it's happening but it's really not. This comes into play with... Um, with God, you have this placebo that God exists, but he doesn't actually exist. Um, in this way, asking a Christian to prove that Jesus is God, outside of the fact that Jesus himself claimed this fact in the Bible, saying those that have seen me have seen the Father, is like telling someone that if they love someone, someone then they need to prove that love, it, prove that love by allowing us to meet love. No, uh, this is um, another thing, outside of the fact that Jesus himself claimed the fact, this fact in the Bible, well, um, the Bible is not proof of anything. The Bible is circular logic. You cannot actually use the Bible as evidence. The Bible is not evidence for anything except for that you are very gullible people, that you're, able to, you're willing to believe pretty much anything you're told about your religion. Love is a human emotion. You can't make the comparison of God and love because love is a human emotion. We know, we, we, we've already studied this, what chemicals in your brain fire when you are experiencing love. So yes, love technically is a factual thing. It's something that exists, but it's something that exists that humans invented. Humans invented love by um, expressing the feeling and the, um, well, expressing the feeling that they experience when something happens, when they fall in love. Um, love is just the English word that, hum that 
uh, people use for it. There are, you know, other other lo- um, words for love, but that you experience when you get these feelings. And then when you study the brain, it's certain chemicals in your brain are firing at this time. So no, you don't have to meet love because love is a human emotion. If you were to state, if you were to make this comparison, I would agree with you. God is a human emotion. God I- exists in the fact that it's inside everyone. God is just someone who you substitute in place of more morals and stuff like that. It's someone inside of you, inside of everyone who believes in God. God exists in the fact that God is inside of you, inside of everyone's heads. He is not a true deity. It is just something that you make up inside of your, of your head for comfort, for morals, which would be really fucked up, or for guidance in life. This whole paragraph kind of collapses on itself simply because you're comparing an emotion to a deity, which uh, isn't a good comparison, especially since we've already proven love exists. You don't need to meet love. You can feel love, but you do need to provide other evidence for God. For example, we did find the brain chemicals for love. Okay, uh, show that God exists. If God is this being that you are so in tune and so, um, what's the word, so strongly believing about, that's a horrible way to put it, but whatever, then you should be able to provide us some sort of proof. You should, honestly. If this being is exactly as you describe it or as the Bible describes it, there would be some sort of proof for it, other than experiences, which has never been provided. That's all we're waiting for. You need to satisfy your burden of proof. Sorry for bumping the mic. He is in essence, he is love itself, and he is a gentleman who waits to be invited into one's life rather than forcing his way in. Free will, our greatest gift. Oh, God, this is sad. Um, uh, He doesn't exist. He is not love. Love is uh, chemicals firing in your brain. Uh, Certain chemicals, I don't know the actual ones because I'm not a scientist. I haven't done research on that. And he's a gentleman who wants to be invited into one's life rather than forcing forcing his way in. Yet, if you don't invite him in because of lack of empirical evidence, um, meaning it is actually illogical to believe in him, then you are going to burn in hell for all eternity. Wow, he is definitely one good gentleman. No. If you read the Old Testament and, you know, parts of the New Testament, your God is not as great of a gentleman as you think he is. But, you know, I'm not going to go into things in the Bible like that. There are so many contradictions all over YouTube and things that are just awful about God um, that it, you know, is disgusting to want to believe in such a thing. Ironically, it's for this reason that even to promote, uh, even remotely attempt to prove or even to explain how God exists to an atheist is a pointless feat. Because the first, first the atheists must genuinely be opening, open to inviting Jesus into their hearts, minds, and their lives. Once again, this is incorrect because all we need is just Im- evidence. We don't, we need this evidence. That's how the mind of a skeptic works. Simply provide this evidence. Meet, 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 uh, meet your burden of proof, and that's all you need to do. We will believe in your God. Whether we follow Him is another thing. I wouldn't follow um, the God that you are believe in, but I would believe in Him. I would believe he exists because there would be evidence for it. And let's face it, most atheists would genuinely, would not genuinely be open to such an invitation and therefore will probably never truly know Jesus. Well, we won't know Jesus because there is no evidence for him. Um, and the one and only God who created them, once again, you're making an assertion, you're making, you're jumping to a huge conclusion with no evidence that your God is the true God um, when you are completely uh, pushing aside all the other possible gods that exist when you know they have just as much evidence as your god the only reason you believe in this god is because you were brought up in probably the u.s or the uk you weren't brought up in some other country that believes in some other god i guarantee 100 percent for a fact no i'd say 99 percent that if you were brought up in the middle east you would be muslim you would not be saying these things as you say them now you'd be saying them from the muslim point of view but you're not because you were born and raised in the u.s slash uk or some other christian nation to be honest it's just pure indoctrination. You only you only see this as, oh, this is definitely true because of where you were born and raised and what you were ta- taught to believe. That's it. And 
you end it with, and the only one who can eternally save them, jumping to the same conclusion that your God is the only God and the true God, when once again you have failed to sa satisfy your burden of proof and you failed to prove that your God is more likely than any of the other gods or no God whatsoever. Sad, really, but true. Yeah, that's a good way to end it. It's sad that you believe these things, but it's true. I mean, people like you are uh, existent everywhere, sadly. And I hope that someone like this will eventually change their mind. It's not likely just because, you know, they're so, so indoctrinated and so wound up in these beliefs that the likelihood of change is, is very minuscule. But... You know, this is just my personal opinionated take on these issues. Uh, why why does this person believe this? I don't know. But, um, why? I mean, I know why, but, like, why, why aren't they skeptical about it? Why do you just blindly follow this? I don't know. I hope you one day change your mind, but I'm losing hope that that's going to happen. That's about it for this podcast, guys, or this podcast-like video. Uh, let me know what you think of it, any changes I should make. If you want anything me to, for me to talk about in the next one or with Kyle, let me know. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Have a nice day.